everybody feel a certain way and don't know whether it's from God or not. Oh, I'm just moving. You got to know the move of the spirit when God is moving. And when God is moving in the room, you're going to know the difference between feeling and faith. You're going to know where God is. And the only way you're going to know where God is, is being with God. Is being in his presence and knowing when his presence show up. That's why God said, you bring the atmosphere in the house. You are the church. This is the building. Whatever you bring in is what charges your atmosphere. If you bring in anything outside of him, that's what's in the atmosphere. And the only one knows what's in the atmosphere is those that are in the spirit. Those that are in feeling think something is happening that ain't happening. You got to know the difference between faith and feeling. Because anybody will stir up your feeling. But when faith is involved and you believe in God, nobody has to stir you up because you already charged up so you know what you in the midst of. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get out of feeling. It's time to walk by faith. Say, get over you. Don't y'all know a person can be quiet, can be very reserved, but once they get tipsy, get in alcohol, everything that they suppressing begin to come out, even how they don't like you. Sit around you all the time, quiet, reserved. As soon as they get high, everything come out. Get past feeling and begin to walk by faith. Because it's not you that's supposed to be doing it. It is God. And it's time for the church to recognize what God is doing in the here and now. And I'm going to tell you this. The only way you can recognize it is being with it. And knowing what he's about. If you never go in your word, if you never lift up your hands just to say hallelujah, just to say thank you, Jesus, don't think that you can come up in here and think that you know when you don't know. And don't get mad at people that know that they know that they know when you don't know. It's time for a knowing, not just hearing about, but I know you, God, because I have it experience you not based on what somebody else said but based on me being in your presence I know when you're in the room I know when you're moving don't miss the move of God and we miss it because we in self we in self so I'm telling you today church it's time for us to get out of self and know that we in him. And everything we do should be about him and not about us. So I pray today as I go through this message that everybody will open up their hearts today and be ready to receive what God has already said what God has already done. I want you to know it's already done. Let's quit trying to make something happen that God has already made happen through his son. God keep reminding me, y'all, hear me, see me, be attached to me. It's full in the house of God. Hear me, see me, be attached to me. Somebody want to be heard. Somebody want to be seen. And somebody want to be attached to. That's what you call rejection. I'm going to do anything I can to be seen, heard, and attached to. Meaning that if it means hurting somebody else, I'm going to be heard. 
If it means hurting somebody else, I'm going to be seen. If it means hurting somebody else, I'm going to be attached to. I want people to know who I am. That's rejection. We got to be able to recognize what's amongst us so we'll know how to deal with what's behind the person instead of attacking the person. Get out of feeling. Amen. You will not know if you don't get out of feeling about how you feel, about how somebody else done you. It is no longer you who live, but it's Christ who live in you. Amen. We don't fight against one another. It's not a flesh and blood fight, y'all. Quit fighting with one another and recognize what's behind what the person is doing so you can help that person. Quit talking about your brother and sister and get in your word and recognize what's going on around you. We ain't recognizing our atmosphere. Because the only atmosphere we recognize is full of strife, gossip, backbiting, lying, and all this other stuff. We can recognize that, but what are you doing about it? It's time to be whom God called you to be. Get past feeling. God just keeps saying this. It's too many feelings in this room. This is why God can't manifest because we don't want to let go of how we feel. How somebody hurt me. How somebody did this to me. How You think you're not going to get hurt? You think you ain't going to get disappointed? You think you ain't going to get talked about? You think you ain't going to get ridiculed? Just go ahead and say, take me now. Because as long as you're here on this earth, somebody's going to talk about you. I don't care how good you do or what you do. They're going to talk about you and make your good look evil. And if you in your word, you wouldn't be so up on somebody said something about me. So? That's right. That's right. Do you supposed to be any better than anybody else? Some people are saying, what's wrong with apostle? The Holy Ghost on me. I ain't got nothing against nobody. The Holy Ghost is just taking over because as I open my mouth, he feel it because he already know what's in the room. Those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, and I'm one that when the Holy Ghost come on me, I get Holy Ghost boldness and don't care what people think because God is in here to deliver. It ain't about what you think. That's why God's Word can't go forth in power because people looking in the room to see what people think. I don't care. It's time to be whom God has called us to be. Whatever you don't like, go to your brother. Go to your sister. Quit talking amongst yourself. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And you waiting on God. God waiting on you to shut up. And hear what the Spirit has to say. See, y'all, the anointing that God have on my life ain't like the one that may be on your life. The anointing that's on my life, I'm going to root it up. And when I root it up, I'm going to tear it down. Then I'm going to build and then I'm going to plant. So I'm sorry that you don't like what God has placed upon me. You talk to him, don't talk about me. Because that's what he anointed me and appointed me to do. And just because you ain't doing what God is telling you to do, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. He that have ears, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying unto the church. And if you're born again, you are the church. It's too much talking. People are dying, y'all. People don't know where to go. They're trying everything. And we as the church is sitting watching them die and still in feeling. What about me? What about you? It's not about you. It's about him and what he's done for you. 
allow him to live through you so someone will see his glory. God want to manifest himself. God want to come out of the box, but he said, I can't even come out of the box because you got so much junk in your trunk that I can't get past the junk in the trunk. And you're trying to say, God, where are you? He said, I'm here, but you got me blocked in. There is a roadblock. He said, I can't come out because you done piled stuff up. And I can't flow through you because of the junk in your trunk. And it's time to get the junk out of your trunk and quit playing church. Hmm. Holy Ghost, we thank you. We magnify you. We glorify you in this house. We thank you, Father, for giving us a helper, a teacher, a comforter. We thank you, God, for giving us the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us into all truth, to reveal unto us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for making things known unto us. And Father, I thank you that I know that I know that I know that I have been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but it is Christ who live on the inside of me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and who has died for me. So I thank you, Father, that you have filled my mouth on today. And I thank you, God, that I will only speak what you will have for me to speak and do only what you will have for me to do. Because, God, surely I know that there is deliverance in this room. And I thank you, Father God, that deliverance go through this room like a whirlwind on today. And I thank you that your people hearts are open and receptive, God, to receive your word on today. Quicken them today according to your word. Let there be life coming through your word, God. I thank you and I praise you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want y'all to do me a favor before we go in the word. I want you to be very still. And you don't have to tell me this, but what are you hearing? Everybody in this room is hearing something in your mind. And whatever you're hearing, is it the word? Or is it something that you didn't do before you come to church? Or is it something that's been lingering on your mind that you cannot even focus on the word? Let's do it again. What are you hearing? Some people say, I ain't hearing nothing. You'll hear something in a minute. Because things go across your mind just like, uh, you know how they have on TV and you see words? They, they just go, scroll across. Some of you got so much on your mind, you have to say, stop one minute. Let me catch that. Because you're running. You keep running. You keep running like an ever ready. You don't get wore out with your thoughts. Just go and cross your mind. Just go and cross your mind. There's things that you have built up. And when you get quiet, some people don't get quiet or still because they're afraid of what might come forth. So they keep busy. They keep going so they don't have to think about what's coming across their mind. Is there anybody in the room? I don't want to think about that. So I keep doing other things. And, and, uh, and a person that just talk, 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 just talk all the time. People talk like that all the time because they got a lot on their mind. And they want to talk, 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 talk through it so they don't have to deal with it. But once they lay down, whoosh, there it is. See, that's what the enemy does. If he can get your mind, he got your body. And even though that you're saved, even though that you're born again and you have a new spirit, which is the real you, that spirit is laying there not doing anything because you allowed your mind to take over your body so you're not getting what God has already provided for you. That's what the enemy knows. So as long as you let your mind control your body, you live in just like you're not safe because you done gave the enemy right to that territory. He don't have right to your spirit, but to that soul, it's wide open. This is why you got to renew it every day. You don't miss a day from getting into your word to renew your mind. People, you're not, people don't take this seriously. You got a Bible. Some of you don't have a Bible, but you don't open the Bible up until you feel like it. They go feeling again. Uh -huh. 
You won't even go in it till you feel like it until you get caught or till a sermon come across the pulpit and then you feel like I got that feeling I'm going to go home and get my word because you got that feeling and you feel good right now. Then after you get into it, you lay it down and you go back to the same pattern. I'm too tired to get back in my word. God, you know, but when an attack come, you're going to know. They're going to feel it. It's too many people being attacked in the body of Christ because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. The victory has been won. Thank you, Jesus, through Jesus Christ. But he left you some weapons. And if you don't use your weapons, quit calling on him. He said, I'm done. I done gave you everything that you all oh, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. And the Lord said, you got help. Use it. We're getting so lazy, we don't even want to use the word. But we want to tell people, I got it going. How you got it going on without the word? How can you live without the word? You are a spiritual being. Without the word, you are dying. Dying. Walking around here dead, breathing. Because it takes the word to quicken you. And the only time we get into it is when tragedy comes. And then we become so humble. The stubbornest person in the world, when tragedy hit and they tell them, we can't do nothing else. They're so humble, you can look at them and begin to talk. And they'll say, yes, ma'am, what? Because they ain't got nothing else to turn to. Why do we wait, y'all? Why do we wait to something happen in our lives to try to pick out a scripture? And then we try to live by that scripture, but I got news for you. Though the word of God works, it ain't going to manifest in your life overnight. Because that word got to get in you. Got to really get in you. When it get in you, that's the life that you're going to begin to live outside of feeling. Oh, feeling. Y'all know that song? Feeling. We're walking around in feeling. Because we haven't been transformed. We haven't been changed. Amen. So the Lord want to bring this back in the house. Go with me to Proverbs 12, 25. And he's bringing this back in here. And God always have a reason for doing it. So we're going to do it again. Proverbs 12, 25. It says. Heaviness in the heart of man make it stoop. But a good word make it glad. Heaviness in the heart of man make it stoop. But a good word make it glad. We determined last time I talked about this, you can have a seat. I'm, I'm going to go back and talk about anxiety again because God want me to bring it back in the house because it's more that God wants you to know. When we look at heaviness, this is anxiety. Anxiety is where you feel in uneasiness, you feel in dread, you feel in fear, you feel in agitated. You, you just feel in, you know, low down like you just can't make it. And this is in the body of Christ, y'all. We're supposed to be the ones with the gifts in operation outside of how we feel to come in and motivate somebody else outside of how we feel. We're supposed to be in the body of Christ exhorters. We're supposed to be servers. We're supposed to be perceivers. We're supposed to be givers. We're supposed to be the ones showing mercy. We're supposed to be the ones that's operating, you know, with the perceiver. But what has happened? We're so weighed down. We're so depressed that we're not thinking about what God has given us. We're looking at the situation that we're in. That's what anxiety will do for you. And the enemy knows this. The enemy knows if I can get them anxious, if I can get them so anxious, it's going to bring them low. See, anxiety is what brings depression. And you have to know where did this come from? How did this come about? And you have to check on what you're thinking about because if you leave it there, it's going to bring anxiety and it's going to bring you low. It's going to depress you. So when the Lord was bringing this back to me, God said, we got to go back through this because people really don't know where they are right now. 
They're trying to figure out why am I feeling this way? I'm saved. I have money in the bank. My, you know, I'm in good health. You know, my marriage is good. My job is good. But why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling? And some people still lay in that stuff. Just sit there and lay in it. Well, I'll just lay here. I'll just get me some rest. I'll go to sleep. And when I wake up, it'll be all over. But then you wake up with the same thing because you're still trying to figure out what's wrong with me. God has given you a helper. Whether you know it or not, his name is Holy, which means he's holy. He's set apart. He's holy. He's the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to give you a helper, one that's going to help you when you're brought low, one that's going to comfort you, one that's going to walk alongside of you when you feel like you can't do nothing else. He said, I have given you what you need in these times of you feeling low. He said, but when you don't call on your helper, when you don't call on your comforter, you're saying, I can do it myself. I don't need your help. So we try to find a way to get ourselves out of this stupor. Some ways that people find, which I found years ago, I'll go buy stuff. I'll start this, this thing here, I'll sew, you know, I'll get, I'll exercise, I'll sell Mary Kay, I'll do this, I'll do that. See, the enemy had me sought up, Brother Rick. He sought me up good because I was feeling good when I felt like if I start sewing and making something. I mean, I, I felt like something was rising up in me because I felt like I found something to take away how I was feeling. That didn't work. So then I had to go back to this man and say, you know, I believe if I sell some Mary Kay and uh, help some people out, that's going to help me. So he let me buy all these products. Because I had a feeling. I went on how I felt. See, every time you go on how you feel, it's going to affect your pocketbook. It's going to affect your pocketbook because you're going to try to find something to get you out of how you're feeling. All of those things did not work, y'all. Until I began to seek a God that I really didn't want to seek until I came to this situation. And I wasn't saved then. And as I began to seek him and cry out to him, it didn't happen overnight, y'all, because God had to try me and see. Because, see, God knew, knew my heart. He knew where I was. And, th and this is the reason why I'm going here and say you cannot go on feeling. Because feeling will leave you where you at. Because your feeling will make you feel like if I do this, this right here will work and you get happy. Happiness don't last. But the joy that God gives you, it outweighs being happy. It gives you something that nobody can buy, that nobody can do anything about except God. So the reason why I'm going back over anxiety to let you know how it would affect you in a way that you feel like you're losing your mind. And the enemy knows that, but this is the key. The Bible say heaven is in the heart. God says, stop right there. He said, you can have thoughts in your head. Anxiety comes from the way you think. If you're in a situation with your finances, and those finances are getting out of control, and you can't slide the credit card no more to help you over here, all of a sudden, you have this thinking in your mind that you're going to lose everything. You don't have no money in the bank. You can't even find no change around the house no more. You can't borrow from nobody no more because you don't have money to pay them back. So all of these thoughts keep circulating in your mind. They're in your mind. When they're in your mind, you have an opportunity to deal with what's in your mind. If you don't deal with what's in your mind and you keep pondering on what's in your mind, when it get in your heart, that's when it's going to take root and that's when depression set in. Some people don't even know when they're depressed. They don't know when they're depressed. That's why he said anxiety in the heart is in the heart. The enemy is after your heart because he know if I can take that word from you before it get rooted in your heart, I got you. 
But if the word get rooted in your heart, the word of God, he cannot have you. So the enemy want to come in and snatch the word. That's why in Matthew 13, these that was on the wayside, when they heard the word, the Bible says Satan, Satan came in immediately and took the word out of their heart before they got understanding of that word. See, just like in here today, what God has given you, if you don't go back home and get into the word of God for yourself and say, I heard what apostle have said, but God, I need for you to show it to me. And when he began to show it to you and you began to think about it over and over again and begin to meditate on it, guess what? It's going to get in your heart, but it's just in your heart. It got to take root in your heart. The word just don't get, it goes in your heart, but it got to have a root to it. It's just like a plant. When you plant a plant in that soil, somebody can come in and just pull it right back up because it haven't taken root. But you leave it there for a while, you tugging and you're tugging and you're getting somebody behind you and say, help me, help me, help me. After a while, they have to get what bulldozers to pull up roots from trees because they've been there so long that it takes more to pull it up. So the enemy know, see, he sets a trap. He don't mess with you right then. He do it little by little by little. What did he go on? Your five senses. That's your five senses is what he used. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you financially set. Every, your bills are paid. You're debt free. You don't owe nobody nothing but to love them, but paying daily bills, light bill, phone bill, you know, you're paying all of that. But all of a sudden, you're watching television. And they put in front of your eyes what's new, what's happening now. And every time you watch television, it's before your eyes. You ain't never thought about it. You ain't never wanted it. But every time you turn on the television, it's right there. Next thing you know, somebody come over to your house and they got what you were looking at. You never thought, you thought about it, but you didn't never go after it. So once they put it before you and say, this is what this does, all of a sudden they're saying, I got to have that. So you go get that. That's one thing that you got. Then it just keep on. It keep on. Next thing you know, you done got in debt with something that you don't even use no more. It's just laying around the house. Come on, y'all. <laughs> it just lay around the house. You, you ain't using it no more. You don't pick it up no more. It don't mean you no good. So then the enemy keep building a case in that area. Next thing you know, you used to be debt free, but now you got credit card after credit card after credit card. Now you sitting there trying to live by paycheck after paycheck after paycheck because you done went over your limit. And now you're saying, how did this happen? So that's when worry set in. You worrying about how I'm going to pay this, how I'm going to pay that, what I'm going to do with this, what I'm going to do with that. And every day it's the same pattern. All of a sudden, it's in your heart. Then you become depressed and your continents have changed. You don't act the same no more. You don't talk the same no more. You're cutting people off. It's totally different. This is what the enemy does, y'all. He used your five senses to get what he want, dealing with Christian folks. And then we get in debt. Then we get overwhelmed. We'll use physical, your health. Oh, I'll eat this and I'll be all right. You eat and you eat and you eat. Never had high blood pressure. Now you got it because it's so good. Oh, I'll fix that. I'll go get some hypertension pills. You go get your pills and you're still eating what you don't supposed to eat. But you're feeling good. But then something else shut down. He go feeling again. Well, I'm doing okay. A little bit won't hurt. A little bit. Then there's a lot. You know why? Because we ain't hearing from the spirit. We're hearing from our flesh. We're hearing from our, what we taste. It's coming from your five senses. So God is saying anxiety in the heart, it weighs you down. It depresses you. So what we have to do is understand where is this stuff coming from? It's coming from the world. We have to understand we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Have I made mistakes? Yes, ma'am, I have. And when I make those mistakes, I have to go back to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, forgive me. I repent because you were telling me not to and I did it. 
So that's your first thing, repenting of what you've done and when you got to turn from it and not go back to it. But the enemy is going to always have something before your eyes to keep you in a place that he want to keep you in. So anxiety in your heart will weigh you down. Depression will get you to the point of you don't want to be here no more. You don't think you got nothing to live for because your thoughts have overwhelmed you. And when you get anxiety and it lead to depression, fear is there. Dread is there. That's why Job said, the thing I greatly feared has come upon me because it started out with anxiety. What was Job doing? Job was so worried about his children. They were not even in his house. He was so righteous before God. He was afraid that they were doing stuff. He didn't know whether they were doing it or not, but he said, you know what I'm going to do? He said, I'm just going to go ahead and sacrifice for my children. So this man was righteous. He was blameless before God, but he had a fear. He became anxious, and guess what? That's how the devil come in. That's how the door was open. We get doors open in our lives, and we use the word of God and don't even see that the devil is saying, no, they're fearful in that area. You quoting the word, but you're scared. You can quote the word and still be scared. You can tell somebody you heal, but in your mind you're saying, I'm going to die. I'm sick. Come on, we got church folks saying, I'm the healed of the Lord. In the back of your mind, you're the devil's playing with your mind, so you're going to die at an early age. Right. And you got a fear, but you talking truth, but your mind, your heart is full of fear. We got people saying, um, I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. I have more than enough. And deep down in your heart, you're struggling. You're saying, how am I going to make it? And your actions is proving what <laughs> your heart is saying. So see, we need to quit trying to fake it to make it. We just need to be real. If you are scared, say you're scared. But Holy Spirit, I need help to come out of this fear. If you ain't got it, say, no, I don't have it. But I know a God who does. Come on, admit it. But then quit it. We got too many people speaking something, but deep down in their heart, it ain't right. He said, you praise me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Your thinking and your speaking got the line up. Your heart and your mouth. This is why the enemy used the heart, because God said, out of the abundance of the heart. Abundance means overflow of the heart. Your mouth is going to speak. See, this is what the enemy does. He keep putting stuff before you, and you ain't doing nothing with it. All of a sudden, it's an overflow, and that's when it begin to gush out of your mouth. You may not say nothing that somebody is uh, saying, but after a while, when that overflow comes that you have packed down in your heart, it's going to shoot out of your mouth. Anger is coming out like a fireball because you will sit there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God is good, yes, he is, mm -hmm. and no, you ain't agreeing with him. No, you mad at him. No, you upset with him. And you sitting there, yeah, yeah, God is good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So every time you sit with him, it's still, amen. Thank you, Jesus. And then the next time, whoosh, there it is. There go your overflow. Out of the abundance of your heart, what's speaking? The mouth. The enemy know that. He said, you know what? I'm setting you up. I'm giving you little by little. And when you don't ask for help through the Holy Spirit, then this is what your atmosphere projects. So this is why we have to take the time and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what am I suppressing? What am I holding on to that I just let, thought I let go? Show me me. That's why you say, search me. And show me, God, is there e any evil way in me? See, we're always looking for evil ways in other people. But you got to stop for a while and say, God, show me me. See, the enemy is like this. God was showing me. We're still talking about anxiety. But he was showing me, even with lust. When you lust after something, you have a longing. You have a craving for something that you know that's forbidden. When a man is lusting after a woman, we went over this before. He's committing adultery in his heart. He don't have to sleep with the woman. See, everybody think adultery is getting in the bed with a person. 
No, adultery is when you're lusting and you're longing for a woman and you're a married man and you cannot have that woman or a woman lusting after a married man and can't have that man. So in your mind, you got a, a longing and a desire and things begin to flur up in your body because every time you see the woman or you see the man, you have a craving for them and you're lusting after them and all of a sudden you see yourself in the bed with them. You don't commit adultery. Because it's in your heart. These longings come in your heart. But then people say, I've been faithful to my wife and my husband for 20-some years. Liar, liar, pants on fire. I ain't slept with nobody, you're lying. Because if you turn on that television and you're watching all that crazy mess, men and women, these women half naked, come on. TV now, you don't need Showtime or HBO. Turn on Lifetime, they're naked. And then you ready to get naked with your mate. And then told them before you had a headache, men, turn on Lifetime for them. Give them the remote, turn it on and say, watch this. You have a good time that night. Because it's about your mindset. It's about what you see. Then you start acting it out because the more you see it, it gets into your heart. That's why you got to turn off what the world is doing. Amen. If you cannot get with your mate without turning on the TV, you ain't with them. You with somebody else you saw on TV. Hmm. The enemy know how to set you up. That's why Jesus had to make it plain. He said when you lust after a woman in your heart, you already committed adultery. So this is why the Bible say, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This is where life comes from, from your heart. So we have to guard our heart. How do we do it? With the word of God. Because once you get the word, you have to guard that word. Because the enemy going to come in and say, did God really say? You'll be all right. Nobody won't see you. This is what you need to do. Wait until it get dark. I'm still talking about anxiety. I'm getting somewhere. So you, you listen to the devil and you think you sneaking. You think you doing stuff underhanded and ain't going to get caught. I'm just going to say, I ain't going to say ignorant going to see. That's stupidity. Because God see you. And God don't like ugly. And the Bible say you reap what you sow. So this is what happened. You having an affair, you loving on your wife, you buying your wife stuff. You, baby, what you need, baby? Let me do this for you. Some men do it out of guilt. They do it out of guilt because they're feeling guilty. And then when the wife say, honey, let me ask you something. Can I hold your phone? All of a sudden, fear come in. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you start shaking. Anxiety come in. Well, well baby, what? What you want with my phone? I just want to hold it because I believe it's some pictures in there you have that I don't have. Well, baby, t t t tell me what it is. What are you studying for, baby? Well, t t t t tell me what it is. I'll, I'll look in there for you. Anxiety is coming. Fear is coming. Dread is coming. Uneasiness is coming. You're getting agitated. Your hands are sweating because you're thinking, did I take, did I get that out of my phone? Is she going to check my numbers? Oh, Lord, you're getting all nervous. Your eyes is bought. Anxiety in the heart weighs it down. When the phone ring at night, you scared that crazy woman is going to call your house and it's three o'clock in the morning and you're like, oh, what you hollering for, baby? What's going on? It's all right. <laughs> Anxiety in the heart. Then it gets so. You can't take it no more. This done started depressing you. You can't sleep. Because see, the enemy done done what he needed to do. Because, see, the enemy done made a baby through you, and you don't even know it. Now you're ready to confess your mess and get it over with. Now you're ready to go to your wife because you feel like you're going to have a heart attack. That's anxiety. Feel like you can't breathe. See, this is what the enemy does, y'all. Anxiety comes in many ways. It comes through affairs. 
It comes to sickness, feeling like somebody's saying this is in the family, and all of a sudden you get agitated, you get scared, you get fearful. Oh, Lord, if they had it, they said it come through the bloodline. Then you'd be looking for it. That's anxiety. So the enemy is setting anxiety up, but it's our job that whatever thought come in our mind that don't come in alignment with the word, we get rid of it. But why aren't we getting rid of the thoughts? Because we're not in the word. So we don't know what the word is saying. So we accept that thought and the enemy knows that. That's why he tried to keep you out of church, keep you out of Bible study, keep you away from the word, keep you so busy because he's setting something up in your life. If it ain't setting it up with you, he's setting it up with your kids. If it ain't setting it up with your kids, he's setting it up on your job. And when he make the touchdown, you feel like you can pass out. And then it's taking you a while to get back up. Then he bringing something else in before you get back up. Anxiety in the heart makes you depressed. Even in ministry, if I don't keep myself in this word, I wouldn't be preaching. Because the things that go on in my life in the run of a day, I have to keep my mind Focus on things above and not on things of this earth. Because if I let it slip one moment, the enemy is using that one moment to put me in a place that I will take a while to get out of. Going back to Moses in Numbers 11. Moses, he had all of these people that God had given him. He was their leader. He was their deliverer. So he had to be in a place with God to hear what God had to say to him to give the people. Because he know outside of God, he can do nothing. Can you imagine one man with all of these people? So Moses, it was a time that these people got tired of eating what God had given them. Y'all know what we talked about, despising the word. You know, losing our appetite when it comes to the word. They didn't want manna from heaven no more. Come on, y'all, it comes a time in our life when we feel like the word ain't working for us. We feel like we're speaking the word, but seem like things have not changed. And the reason why you feel that way is because you haven't hit the root of what's going on in your life. Because the word don't miss nothing. The word will come in with power and it, the word will tear it up. The word is quick and the word is alive. The word is life. He said, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So Moses, the people began to grumble. They began to complain to Moses. And they complained so much that Moses was getting discouraged. And Moses was going to God about his discouragement. And Moses really wanted to die. It got so bad that Moses couldn't take it no more. So he, he had anxiety. He was um, uneasy. He had uneasiness. But he, guess what he did? He went to God with it. That's one thing that I like. He began to go to God. He said, God, these people, I'm paraphrasing it, they want meat. Where are we going to get all of this meat for these people? Think about it, y'all. Moses is the one that went to the mountaintop with God. But he let all of this complaining outweigh where he been. And he's going to ask God, where are we going to get this meat for these people? Do you see how many people this is? He forgot who God was. How many of us haven't been in that situation? Come on. You ain't that holy that you ain't forgot. I ain't that holy that sometimes I forget when I'm going through and I have to bring myself back to heaven because I'm staying on earth too long. I'm like, oop, I'm in the earth rim too long. Jesus. So Moses forgot who God was. He said, where are we going to get this to feed all these people? I cannot bear this burden. Moses said it was a burden. How many of us? have saying, God, this is weighing me down so much. God, I can't take it. And you know what God is saying? That's what I've been waiting for. He said, I've been waiting on you to tell me I can't do this. And when you really say you can't do it, you own your face and you're saying, God, I can't, I can't, I can't. If you don't help me, this burden is too much for me to, come on, some of y'all in this room is like that right now. You're carrying a weight. It seems like you're doing all you can do to carry it. But God is saying, cast your burden upon me, and I'll sustain you. You know what God is saying? He said, I want you to roll it over to me, but I'm going to sustain you and help you to get through it. Y'all don't get it? 
He said, I want you to know that I'm going to be the one to help you to get through it, but you got to go through this. So Moses began to cry out. He said, this is a burden, God. I can't do this. So God began to tell Moses, God is so, so good to us. God know how much you can bear, y'all. God know he will give you a way of escape. When it get too hard for you and he know you can't bear it, God will give you a way of escape. So he told Moses, he told him to bring the people and he put his spirit upon the people to help Moses with what Moses was doing. Because God knew, Moses said, just let me die. The burden, can you imagine a burden being that heavy? That you're saying, just take me now. So God knew at that point, Moses need help the holy spirit know when you're really calling on him he know when you really want him to help you y'all the bible said he's a present help today even in your time of trouble but you know what we act like that god ain't nothing we act like that he ain't all powerful he ain't all knowing we act like god don't know what's best for us i got news for you everybody name in here is already written your life is already written. Everything that you're going to do in each day, it was already written before you even got to that day. This is why God said, commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. But you got to commit your way unto the Lord. You got to say, Lord, this is all I have, but I commit it unto you. And if I'm committing it unto you, I know my way is going to be established because I'm trusting in you and not in what I got because what I got ain't going to last. Amen. This is why you don't focus on what's temporal. Temporal will leave you. That's the unseen. You focus on eternal because eternal is everlasting. It's forever. So when you focus on what God is saying, it's from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. It does not change. This is why we have to go to him. And when we go to him, no matter what the bills look like, no matter what your health may be saying to you, no matter what your children are doing, what your job is doing, when you give it to him and say, God, what can I do about the bills? Ain't no more money here. What can I do about the kids? Don't look like they're listening. What can I do about the job? Look like it's going to shut down. But one thing I can do is cast my cares upon you because you care for me, God. I can't carry this because there's nothing that I can do. And then all of a sudden, when God is hearing your heart, the peace of God, even in the midst of the storm, this comes upon you and you go about your day knowing my father is already taken care of and you begin to praise him for what you have. You don't complain about what you don't have. God, even though I'm feeling this way, God, I thank you that I am the heel. I ain't going on how I feel. I'm going on what you said. I'm not going on what my bills look like. I'm going on what you have already supplied. Because you said, give us this day our daily bread. So in this day, I have my daily bread. Though it don't look like it, that's what you said. And you got to be faithful to what you said. So God, I have more than enough to do what I need to do. See, when you plant a seed, and that seed begin to grow, in your time of trouble, overflow is going to come out of your mouth. See, y'all, we're looking at money as overflow. We want overflow in money. God said, I can't give you no overflow in money. He said, because you won't even get in my word and get overflow. He said, I want you to be so full of me. When God said being full of him, he wanted spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is full, but he said, I want it to come on over to the soulless realm. And the only way it's going to come over, if you get into the word of God and you stay full of the word, and you stay full of praise, you stay full of prayer, then it's going to come over to your body and you live in your life in the full. That's how you live it in the full. It ain't based on your bank. It's based on heaven. Everything that you need, you already have in your spirit. But y'all, I want overflow. I don't just want a little tinkle. God, I want all that you know I can handle. 
So that's why every day you got to be in the word. So when trouble come, you get an overflow that's coming out of your mouth. Boom, 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 boom. It's hitting it. And if we ain't hitting it and if we're silent, it's because we are drained. Have you ever been so drained you can't do nothing? Can't say nothing, nothing come out. That is because we allow things to come in and deplete us. You got to make sure that word get rooted and grounded in you. See, Moses knew how to cry out to God, y'all, in this time of trouble. He knew that, God, you're the only one that can help me. Y'all, do we really know God is the only one that can help us or are we leaning on somebody else? I believe we lean on other people because we always got a plan. If this don't work, I'm going to do this. If that don't work, I'm going to do this. But when all that run out, we come right back to God. God said, I've just been sitting here. I've been waiting. God will never move. He will always be there for us. So when we look at anxiety, anxiety is in every area of our lives. We can get so weary when it comes to children. Y'all, I'm going to tell you something. I have learned this. When I was growing up, we just played in ditches. We done all kind of crazy stuff. We didn't look at stuff as like snakes, bears, no, none of that stuff. We just went outside. We had fun. You threw up. They said, go on back outside. You all right. We took them at their word. We ain't know nothing about the flus and all this stuff because they trusted God. Go on out there. You'll be all right. When you had your stomach ache and they lay some onions on your stomach for the worms or whatever it was, granted, it shake me upside down. You all right. Go on. That, that's just how we live. But these day and time, get ahead of it. Oh, God, so-and-so died of that. Begin to throw up. Oh, God, what I done caught. Because we don't listen to so many people say stuff about stuff. Don't let the room start spinning. Oh, Jesus, is it my time? <laughs> don't let something happen unusual. Don't get a cut on your hand. Oh, God, did I get a tech? No. We stepped on nails and kept playing. You remember Miss Mary? Y'all let us keep right on playing, didn't you? Throw a little alcohol on it. Daddy said alcohol solve everything. Go get the alcohol. I'm like, dang, that stuff must be good. Get the alcohol. They rub you down in alcohol. Get a fever. They rub you down and go to sleep. These days and times, oh, God, wonder what you got. Thoughts in your head. Anxiety rises up. We better take care of this right now. They might die in the middle of the night. That's right. Back then, old folks didn't look at stuff like that. They trusted God. They trusted God. God, I'm going to trust you. I ain't have no reason but to trust you. But these days and times and with modern technology and everything, you tell somebody what's going on with you, check it out. You better go check it out. Could be serious. Ain't that what we do? It's better to have been safe than sorry. God used the doctors. He used them to kill you too. That what they say. He don't use them to kill you, but some of them come in there drunk and you don't even know it. And then they give you some of their drunkenness and tell you to go home and sleep it off. Okay, dog. You wake up hallucinating and everything else. Anyway, um... <laughs> But when we were young, we trusted them and we did what they told us to do. And as we did it, we went on. We didn't even give it a second thought, right? We didn't worry about some things we worry about today. We always looked at them to handle everything. Now that we have our own children, they look to us. And when things are out of place with them, they're out of place with us. But you know, I'll look to God and I'll say, God, you know what? You know what's going on. And you're my father. First of all, I say, you're my father. My heavenly father. And you say, you know what I'm in the need of before I ask. You care about me, you know, God, a whole lot. And I know I care about my children, but you care about them even more. So I can't sit here and worry about this right here. Because, God, you already got it taken care of. Just tell me what you want me to do and how you want me to do it. And I have to go to sleep. But when you're sitting up all night tossing and turning, anxiety have come in. And it's wearing you down. It's making you depressed. You don't want to eat. You, you have um, loss of sleep. That's anxiety. So what we have to do is stop and say, Holy Spirit, show me where this comes from. Show me what to do with what's going on in my life. The Holy Spirit will not let you down. He's going to bear witness to the truth. He's going to show you how to come out of that situation. 
So anxiety in the church will stop the church from functioning the way the church need to function. I'm going to use Judah for example. If you got half of Judah in anxiety and they're singing, they're just singing. And what they're going to pull on the other ones, they're singing. <laughs> so this is why you just can't come to church any kind of way. You got to begin at home to have your prayer life with the Lord. You got to begin at home to worship him outside how you feel. If you ain't worshiping him at home and you're laying around in your stupor, don't think you're going to get up here on Judah and make a joyful noise. Because you're going to come and pull somebody else down. And don't be saying, I'm here, I made it. But God can turn that around. If he know your heart, guess what? God will still move because your heart is right. And you'll get healed for coming and not staying home. He has a way of doing things. But it's time now, church, for us to root up these things in our lives that's stopping us to function the way God wants us to function. And anxiety has become people friends. So God's saying it's time for us to get rid of this anxiety. How you do it? Through the word of God. You go in the word and you say, God, you say a good word is what's going to make me glad. Now I'm going to get my good word out of the word of God. If it's dealing with my finances, that's my good word coming from the word of God. If it's dealing with my help, that's my good word coming from the word of God. If it's dealing with my children, that's my good word coming from the word of God. Whatever your situation is, get you a good word from the word and then you're going to be glad. Amen. A merry heart do good like medicine. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. And the enemy know if I can break your spirit, you're going to be dried up. You ain't going to be no good for nobody. But a merry heart does good like medicine and your heart get merry through the word of God. It gets glad through the word of God. The more you go into the word of God on that situation, you begin to get glad. You begin to get happy. Ain't that right, Apostle? Happy. Sing me happy. <laughs> I got that from my pastor. Anyway, this is why we need the word of God, y'all. Every day, the word give you life. Why don't you take medicine that give you life? If life is in the word, why aren't we going to the word? Because we have gotten so subject to everything else. We go to that first before we go to the word. We have to hear the Holy Spirit. We got to hear what he's saying. Just like Elijah. How did Elijah get anxiety? Jezebel began to send him a message. Oh, Elijah was the man now. Elijah killed all them prophets, apostles. Elijah was the man. He sent the word, no rain. He spoke the word. He was the man over there. But old Jesse, she sent a word to Elijah. This is where I'm going. People may look strong to you. They may look like they got it going on. Nothing never happened. But soon as a word come to them outside of what God said, Elijah, when he saw what she said, see, this is what the enemy do with anxiety. He'll give you a message. When you begin to think about that message, the message open up like a movie. And you begin to see what was said. Then your feelings and emotions come in. You begin to shake. You be begin to have dread. You begin to have fear. And then you're saying, I can't do this no more. It ain't going to work. That's how Elijah was. But guess what God did? God came in on the scene. And he began to encourage Elijah because Elijah had more work to do. So God is saying, don't let these things come in on you when God has given you what you need to deal with them. Don't let them deal with you, deal with them. And you deal with them through the word. Don't wait till it pop up. Go in the word every day. Prepare yourself because you don't know what's coming your way. None of us do not let the Holy Spirit reveal it to us. But we want to be well-rounded in the word. I cannot be well-rounded with finances if I ain't well-rounded with healing. Can't be well-rounded with healing if I ain't well-rounded with deliverance. Can't be well-rounded with deliverance if I ain't well-rounded with um, who I am now that I'm in Christ. You got to be well-rounded in the word. You just can't be an expert over here and leave this out over here because you're leaving a door open. Because just because, you know, I'm by Jesus. Jesus Christ, I'm healed, and you got that down pat. He over here working on your bills. 
So you got to have the word in every area of your life. You got to have revelation concerning every area of your life. And when you got that revelation, when things pop up, it's going to come out of your mouth and your atmosphere is going to begin to change and you're going to have peace in that area. One thing I don't like is the divided house. If you're in a house and the husband is in the word and the wife won't even get up to get in it, when things happen in the house, it's going to be divided. The wife's going to go this way. The husband's going to go this way. The husband's going to stand on what he believes. The wife's going to stand on what she believes. It's not going to be no coming together. And if that husband is not really in a place he need to be with God, he's going to go with the wife, and that wrong decision is going to be made because he's listening to her speak out of fear. That's why both husband and wife need to be in the word. So when the wife is telling the husband, the husband can agree with the wife because she's coming out of the word where he's been or where she's been, and it won't be divided in the house. We waste too much time trying to prove to a husband or a wife what the word is saying, and they're running around doing something else. And then saying, we know him. When you know him, you stand on what you know. And the Lord know when you can't stand no more because he'll tell you, you need to do this. I'm going to tell you where you need to go for help. Isn't he good? Because he know where you are. He ain't going to let you die like that. He know you ain't in the place you need to be yet. He know your, your mouth is saying one thing, but your heart ain't got there yet. So God is saying, yeah, go to the doctor. Yeah, go to the lawyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you need to do because you ain't got there yet. Quit trying to be super, supernatural when you're in the natural. You ain't come out the natural yet. When stuff hits you and you know you can't handle it, you better get somewhere. You better holler, Help. You better know that you know that you know. Amen. That's why we need to spend time now, y'all. Don't wait till the last minute because you don't know where you carrying yourself or who you carrying yourself to. So anxiety will weigh you down, but it's because it's in your heart. Ask the Lord to search you and see where your heart is. Amen. Ask the Lord, what are you holding? One thing that I hate, I hate this with a passion. When somebody say, I'm all right, I love you, and it's all good. Then they come out like a roaring lion. That's stuff you suppressed. That's stuff you didn't deal with. That's stuff you swept up under the rug and didn't use the word on. So now you're full of bitterness, you're full of hate, you're full of anxiety, you're full of fear, you're full of animosity, you're full of offense. You know why? Because the enemy say they ain't closed that door. They swept it under the rug. People can talk to you all day long and hate you. And you will know they got hate in them because the spirit will tell you. They'll look at you, love on you, laugh with you, and then in the back of their mind, they're ready to tear you up. Right. As long as you're doing like they want you to do, they love you. When you pull back on them, they begin to cuss you out. They begin to tell you, I know you ain't like me. You always had a problem with me. You always with this one. You always with that one. It was already there. You just bought it out by listening to the spirit when the spirit say, pull back, pull back. The moment you pull back, they come at you like a roaring lion. Because God says people in this place right now, you suppressing stuff. You still got stuff that you ain't dealt with, that you say you dealt with. One day in the word don't deal with your mess. One day in the word don't take you out of your mess. It takes day after day after day to come out of your mess. Let me tell you when you come out of it, when you don't see it. When a person walk in the room, you don't see them the way you see them and thoughts don't come in your head like they used to about them. You have freedom around them. That's when you dealt with it through the word. If stuff keep popping up, let's say you're lusting after somebody. They walk in the room and your body get all antsy. You ain't dealt with it. It's still dealing with you. But what you do is you say, thank you for showing up because you finna show out because you're getting out. Amen. You can't stay here. The devil is a lie. That's not who I am in him. I've already been justified. God has already delivered me from that lusting demon. And I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. Talk to it. Tell it you mean business. 
If it show up, deal with it through the word. Don't try to suppress it down and act like you ain't looking. You looking. It, it, it just disturbs me when, when men or women try to look out of their parenteral vision, walking straight but looking sideways. Look this way. <laughs> Y'all know how it is, play them tricks. Or a woman passed by a man, they act like they're praying. Y'all know how it is. Them the tricks of the trade. The Holy Spirit already let you know. Woman calm as a cucumber. Say, look at here, babe. Go on, look while I'm here. Just go on, look. It's all right to look because you can't have it. Go ahead and look. Go ahead and look. Can't have it. Look, 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 look. Get it over with now so you can be delivered. That's all. You just need to be delivered. Do you want to be delivered? Admit it and quit it. Quit trying to hide it because some men turn all around. Like when the wife ain't with them, they turn all the way around or, or the review mirror over there, and they're looking out the mirror trying to drive. <laughs> Woman jogger, they looking out the mirror. Like they ain't never seen a tail before. Maybe not, not that huge, but they saw one. <laughs> I'm bold with my mess. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Amen. It's time to come out of your mess. Be real. Don't be trying, because that brings your anxiety, and then when you confront them, they act like you're crazy. Come on, y'all, the devil know how to set up stuff. This is why you have the spirit to help you. So you won't get out there and get in stuff you don't have to. That brings anxiety when you're trying to fight the spirit and the flesh is in a battle. You have an anxiety because you're battling with that stuff. Then you're wondering if you're saying stuff in your sleep that they're hearing. You, you were talking to your sleep. What to say? You didn't call my name <laughs> for sure. What to say? <laughs> so we have to let me tell you what's happening stuff is coming out of you that you lay down with that you suppressing let me tell you something your sin will find you out you are uh -uh. you people think that sin is just for a season huh it'll find you out whatever you do in darkness the bible says it's going to come to light Whatever's hidden, it's going to be revealed. If you let go of some of these things, you can let go of anxiety. Amen. Take off the mask. Be real. Tell it like it is. Come on, y'all. We have a deliverance session. The more you let go of something, you feel like you can breathe. You feel like you're free because you ain't holding on to it no more. Go to God and say, I have this problem. And I need help with this problem. I'm tired of trying to come to church and cover this up because I know apostles see it. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> and I'm praying for you. And you and you and you and me too. <laughs> Get around a person and scared. What you looking at? <laughs> what do I suppose to be looking at? <laughs> this is what people do. Because they're so anxious and they won't stay around you longer. They'll fidget right around you. Just fit. Well, why can't you just be still? Because be they got something on their mind. And some people, when they're in your presence, they'll tell you what they're doing because they can't hold it no more. They'll tell you. I, I just need to tell you this. Praise God. Praise God. There's nobody but the Holy Ghost. Now that you know, deal with it through the word. I love you the same. It don't change how I feel about you, but you got to deal with it. And if you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you, but it ain't going to be up in here. Amen. So let's deal with it. I'm here to help you deal with it. Don't let people look at you as strange or different. Deal with it. Come on, y'all. Let's get the junk out the trunk. Amen. Let's quit acting like nothing go on in our lives and we're better than somebody else. Everybody in here have an issue. Some may got rid of some, but you still got something else you got to deal with. And anxiety is weighing you down in those areas. So let's uproot these things through the word of God. The more you get in the word, the more you can come out. The more you get in the word, the more you can come out of your situation. I know Manny did his testimony. Dealing with pornography, right, Manny? He shared it. Is that not right? I ain't putting him on no blast. But he shared it before. And what did you do, Manny? 
How did you get over it? And before you got in that word, you ain't have to look in no book or no woman. It was already in your head. See, you already get your pictures. The longer you look at something and don't deal with it, you got pictures already. You don't even need to go outside your house. You got pornography everywhere. Everywhere you look, wow, what you looking at? Nothing. Because you already formed a picture of it in your mind. Manny, those pictures don't bother you no more, right? How did you get rid of them? Through the word of God. It takes the word. The word has power. It's your final authority. If you want to get rid of mental images in your mind, it is through the word of God. Fear is false evidence that appeared real because you let it stay there too long. Now it's become a part of you because it's in your heart and nobody can tell you no different. But the more you put the word to it, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. It seemed like it get worse. Seemed like it gets seven times as hot. That's when you know I'm hitting you. I'm hitting you with the word because you're trying to hold me. But you can't hold what God has freed. And that's why every day you got to repeat that word. You got to tell that thing what the word of God is saying. Uh -uh -uh -uh. Your days of being here is over. Every day you got to speak to yourself. Do you have to go to somebody and say, I'm, no, you don't. You already went to God. That's between you and God. But they're going to know the difference. They're going to know that freedom has come to your house because things begin to change. The way you talk, the way you act, the way you treat people begin to change. If you are in the word with offense and it's weighing you down and you're still offensive, stay in the word. And ask God, what is the root of me carrying this offense? Because it's coming through something else. The Holy Spirit will tell you. God loves you so much that he's saying anxiety is weighing the church down where the church cannot function the way the church need to function. And people are going through because the church is in a stupor and cannot help them to get through their stuff because the church ain't let go of their stuff. Y'all a spirit, no a spirit. So we have to be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Make our requests made known unto God. Amen. Then after we do it, the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus. And then he said, finally, my brethren, if there, think on these things. If there be anything that's true, that's honest, of a good report, any virtue of praise, he said, this is the things that you think on. I'm paraphrasing it. So every day we think on things that are true. What is true? The word. Things that are good. What is good? The word. We do not think outside the word. And then we capture those thoughts that are not lining up with what? The word. You're not going to know if it's not lining up if you ain't in the word. It takes being in the word to capture what's not of the word. And when you say, no, 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 that's not what the word says. This is what the word says. You cast it down. The enemy going to bring another one. That's not what the word says. You cast it down. Jesus did this in Matthew 4 to give us an illustration. You keep speaking what's written until he leave you. You don't just sit there and think the thought is going to go away. You capture the thought and say, no, 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 no. I'm bringing you to the obedience of Christ. That's how you tear down a stronghold. If you don't tear down a stronghold, it builds up a fortress in your mind. And then it seems like you're hitting a brick wall every time trying to come out. And you feel like there's no way out. That is a stronghold due to your way of thinking. It's time to root them up so we can go out there and do what God has commissioned us to do. Get rid of your junk in the trunk. Ask God, what junk do I have in my trunk? Show me so I can deal with it. And I'm going to say this. Do not ask him to show you something. And you know from your heart you ain't going to deal with it because you think that's what keeps you. I ain't got time to play around with folk. Because I know when you really want to change. A person that really, really want to change, they're going to stay in their word. They're going to stay in prayer. 
They're going to fast. They're going to come in church every time the doors is open. They're going to be ringing your phone off the hook every chance that they get to say, I can't do this by myself. This is what's happening in my life. I really do need help. I really need help. They're not going to give up until they get a release. Someone that don't really want to change, they'll play around with you for a while just to get attention and know they ain't going to let go of it. But the Holy Spirit will show you. They ain't ready to let go. Leave them to themselves. So it's time, y'all. Whatever you're dealing with in this room that's bringing you anxiety, that's bringing you dread, that's bringing you fear, I speak that God reveal it. I speak that he show it to you, and as he show it to you, you deal with it through the word. And as you deal with it through the word, I speak that freedom come in your life like never before. Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And you already free in your spirit. It is your soul that's tangled up, that's messed up, that's twisted up. But it takes the word of God so you can be full of him and your body will follow. Amen. This young lady sitting here by Calvin, could you come up here, baby?